company, when I started an insurance company, uh, one of our main carriers is a Fortune 100 company. Everybody knows about it. starts with the letter A, I, A, ends with the letter G. And uh -huh. there's, uh, you can, it's three letters. You can pretty much figure out what's <laughs> in the middle, okay? <laughs> and we start writing business with them. And at first, while we're going for a year, there's a change in uh, uh, leadership and they change the positions. And there was a meeting in Napa Valley when they were introducing the new leadership team. And I went, I took my wife and my dad and my six, year, uh, six month old son at the time, newborn, firstborn. So we go and I'm working to try to make this business work. We're in survival mode and we go in there and uh, the new CEO is a very, very powerful guy named Bob Ben Moshe. I'm a big fan of his. He's a beast. He's, he had cancer. He was on his death, but he had two years to live when they hired him. Okay. I mean, this is like a legendary, possibly one of the greatest CEO in the history of financial services. He's incredible what he does. So he leaves his vineyard in uh, Dubrovnik, Croatia. He used to be the former CEO of MetLife. And they call him and he said, you're the only person we hire. And they said, okay. He took the job, came out. They're doing a meeting in Napa Valley. They introduced a number two and a number three guy. I leave and I, my wife and I, we're like, hey, we signed up for this cooking class. I said, babe, you go, I'm gonna spend time with the kid. You take my dad. My wife and my dad are very close. And so they went. While they're there, the number two guy is positioning to see which one of the relationships that they have as an insurance agency like mine, which one of them he cuts and which one of them he keeps. So he starts talking to my wife and he says, let me ask you a question. Um, how do you feel about Armenians? And my wife says, excuse me, how do you feel about Armenians? I said, what do you mean? Do you trust Armenians? Because we've done some business with some insurance folks uh, and these Armenians have cost us millions of dollars because they've done so much fraudulent business. And my wife's like, you understand my husband's Armenian. He says, no, I know. That's why I'm asking you. He says, if I had a problem with Armenians, why would I have married my husband? And my dad is listening. My dad doesn't like fights. He's like a complete opposite of me. Very nice guy, chill guy. So they're coming back and my wife and my dad are talking. My dad says, please don't say anything to Pat because you don't want to say this. And my wife's like, if I don't tell him he finds out, it's, it's going to be bad news. So my wife comes in. She says, I have to tell you what happened. My dad is nervous. I can see it. And my wife says, here's <laughs> what this man said about you. I said, really? I said, yes. I lost it. I couldn't stand it because I don't like to be judged by me being from Iran. And even when I first became an advisor, day after 9-11, I walked into a client's house who were Mormons. They said, we don't do business with uh, people like yourself. Uh, if you have somebody who's a Mormon, send them to me. I said, I'm the best guy in my office. He said, we don't care. We don't do business like people like, because 9-11 had just happened. You know, I'm a Middle Eastern looking guy. You don't see people looking like this all the time. So anyways, my wife comes back and she tells me the story about this man asking about me being Armenian and his concern. So she tells it to me, I said, okay, I'm not comfortable with this because I want to be judged based on the results I get, not based on me being Middle Eastern. Long story short, we come back, I get word from my consultants that they're about to drop my contract because the new guy is afraid of us doing fraudulent business. I said, no problem. I said, when are they having this meeting? He said, next week. I said, I'm gonna call a meeting this week. I had my attorneys call him up and we set up a meeting this week. They flew in from Houston to my office to have a meeting with me. Uh. They come in. I have my executive team sitting next to me, my wife, my executive team, everybody's sitting there, their compliance, everybody's sitting right there. The consultants are in the middle saying, Pat, please don't bring anything up. It's not my style. So he says, okay, let's go ahead and get the meeting started. I said, before you say anything, I'd like to say something. He says, what's that? I said, look, you know, um, I came to America to be judged based on the kind of work I do in America. I served the US Army proudly, 101st Airborne Division. Ooh. And I chose to get into the financial services industry. And I said, there's a rumor going around that the company, you guys are not comfortable with me being Armenian, Assyrian, and Middle Eastern. What I like to do is I'd like to make this conversation today about the results and what we can do as a company, not me being Armenian, Assyrian. If we're going to go that route, there's going to be a problem. Yes. What would you like to do with this meeting? He pauses for five seconds and says, um, I get your drift. I get your point. Got it. Fair enough. You guys got one year. No problem. He left. Meeting ended up being a five minute meeting. It wasn't an hour and a half meeting. It was scheduled to be an hour and a half meeting. It ended up being a five minute meeting. They walked out. Thanks. We're doing business with them till today. It's one of the best relationships we have. When he retired after 38 years of being in the financial industry, one of the godfathers of insurance, we got him a yacht and he had a few hundred people on the yacht in Miami. His closing speaker for his ceremony, there was five men. 
was his best friend of 26 years. The second closing speaker was me. He wow. says, I want you to give a closing message, and I gave it to him. And till today, we have a relationship. So I earned my stripes based on results. I don't want anybody to judge me based on me being Middle Eastern, Armenian, Assyrian, any of it. So I can't stand it. But I'm going to give you the other side. I also didn't feel sorry for myself. You know, I stepped up and I said, look, but please, I can't stand people feeling sorry for me. Yeah. I cannot oh, stand yeah. people feeling sorry. Actually, yeah, yeah. So I said, you know what? No, I'm going to go get results. So that's my views. I don't know if that answers your question for you, but that's kind of my position. No, I get it. I get it. And then the viewers listening to that, you know, I hope they get that as well. Because I read right into it. I see which, exactly what you mean by that. And, and that, that story explains it and answers the question better than I could have asked. You know, is it one of these things with you about that, about that story and, and push it forward? Is, it, is that what drives you is I'll be damned if someone's going to get one over on me or someone's going to predict correctly on me and it be in the negative because that's one thing you know is it like i'm going to show your ass is that kind of what pushes you uh, through it or i mean no, i mean no listen uh, uh, jordan said he had a memory of everybody that said any words to him ever okay i mean i've been called terrorist i've been called jihad i've been called uh turban head i've been called camel jockey i've been called all these different things you know to me uh, and I've been called that by everybody, white, black, Hispanic, Latino, and my own kind. I've been called all that. Guess what? All good. All of those guys today call me Mr. Bed David. <laughs> all of those guys are calling me for advice and counsel. That's the ultimate victory. My dad always said, if you can win arguments with results without your fist, you'll end up becoming a leader. I used to try to win arguments with this. Yeah. It's, it's not a, there's no point of winning arguments like that. So when you win, people have no choice but to do business with you. They don't have a choice but to do business with you when you're the best. And I think that's always the best argument when you become the best at what you do. Yeah, absolutely. The results, you can't argue with success, they always say. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this short clip from our Patrick Bet David interview. If you want to see more like this, click right here. If you'd like to watch the entire interview, click right here.